and Azuma Nelson. And you can see that they are identical in size. There's an eight-year age advantage that belongs to Leha. And Nelson is given a tiny edge of an inch or so in reach. Punch stat numbers Larry Merchant and the story of jabs in the first couple of fights. Well, what we uh, see in these jabs uh, is that Leha increased the number of jabs in his fight. And if you recall, Nelson has been com complaining that something was in his eyes during that second fight. I think it was simply Leha's left hand. And here we take a look at Nelson's jabs. Conversely, he only landed nine jabs per round in the second fight, despite the fact that he opened a nasty gash over Leha's eye in that fight. He couldn't take advantage of it. Rules of the bout with cult figure Harold Letterman. The Azuma Nelson Jesse James Leha fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you can be saved by the bell in the 12th and final round only. Jim. And now James Leha, for whom Jesse incidentally is not officially part of his name. It was his father's given name and simply has become attached to his name as part of his boxing identity. But then right. going to the ring for the third time against Azuma Nelson. Harold, what do you know about the two foreign officials who are at ringside for this fight, Larry, the judges? Larry, Angel Lewis Guzman has been judging 26 years. I don't think there's really any great objection to him. As far as Richie Davies from Great Britain, it's a tricky situation because number one, this is his first world title fight, and number two, in Great Britain, he's a referee. Most referees don't want to judge, and also in Great Britain, the referees, they, they, they don't, uh, you know, there are no judges in Great Britain, so therefore he looks at the fight with a completely different perspective. And this may be scaring the Leha people. The record for Jesse James Leha and Roy Jones referred to those two tough losses. One of them to Gabriel Ruelas a couple of years ago, and then a loss earlier this year to Oscar De La Hoya in Madison Square Garden. Actually, it was in December of 1995. He moved up to 135 to fight De La Hoya and. Uh, According to the Leha people, that one virtually doesn't count. They didn't expect to have a chance to win the fight going in, really. Yeah, but as a result of that fight, for agreeing to take that fight, Jim, he got an agreement to fight again for the title, and that's why he's here tonight. Stunning fifth round KO over Gabriel Ellis and Ruelas's first appearance after his unfortunate experience with Jimmy Garcia. Ruelas, of course, the winner in the fight, as the result of which Garcia eventually died. You know, Nelson has been saying some of the most awful things about Leha in this fight, and it's so uncharacteristic of him to be saying he's going to put Leha into a coma by the first or second round. He's going to make him retire. He's going to knock him out. And again, this goes back to what I said earlier, Jim, that I think he thinks that he has to try to overpower Leha. Or he could be planting a seed in Leha's mind and may intend to do exactly the opposite and come out and box him as a cutie. He's certainly capable of that. The overall record for Nelson, the first of those losses, incidentally, was back in 1979 in Madison Square Garden against the late, great Salvador Sanchez. It was a 15th round TKO for Sanchez just three weeks before Salvador died in his automobile accident. A fight that I may have seen about 150 times, of course. And it's a great one, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Truly, indeed, one of the greatest fights of all time. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated, along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission and the World Boxing Council. WBC President Jose Sullivan, supervisor for the WBC at ringside, is Roy Van Patten. 
Your Nevada Commission members and officials, including Executive Director Mark Ratner, are the same, except for the judges and referee. The three judges assigned scoring the bout on a 10-point must system will be Angel Luis Guzman, Jerry Roth, and Richie Davies. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Richard Steele. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Boulder Station Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing her fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trimmed with silver and weighing in at 130 pounds. His professional record is 30 victories with two defeats and two draws. He has scored 14 knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the pride of San Antonio, Texas, the challenger, former super featherweight, champion of the world, Jesse James. across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red and gold with green trim and weighing also 130 pounds. He brings a professional record into the ring of 38 victories with only three defeats and two draws. He has captured three world title belts in his pro career. Ladies and gentlemen, from Ghana, Africa, presenting the WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, the Professor. Azuma Nelson. Please. Take care of business, baby. Come on out, come on out. Let's go. This is the maximum. Okay, I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning again. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands, good luck. Jim, there's a jewelry convention in town. I read where some four or six billion dollars worth of jewels are laying around here, but there's no greater jewel than this man, Nelson, in boxing. You just wonder how long he can continue to sparkle the way he has. An amazing specimen. Career marked by ups and downs. Stretched out over such a long period of time, he once fought on a card where on the undercard, Tim Witherspoon was fighting Sam Scaff for the right to move to a title bout with Tony Tubbs. It's been that long for the professor. And he stayed just as strong and just as smart and has nowhere hardly. And he goes to the body with the left and over the top with the right and true to his word, Azuma Nelson is going to try to take James Leha out early. Jesse James is very calm through all this, though, and that's what it takes. That shows you the heart of a champion. Well, and also the question is, if he, if he doesn't stop him or hurt him here, how long can he sustain that kind of a fight? At age 37, that is a big question. It's all... Let's also note that Azuma does have respect for Jesse James' punching power because Jesse did knock Azuma down once. Second round of their second fight. Leha had Azuma Nelson down. Leha scored consistently with uppercuts against Azuma. In order to do that, he has to slip inside of Azuma's jab. What Le Leha is also doing is he's punching Azuma's left arm to weaken that left arm early. He landed four shots to the biceps. Right hand over the top for Nelson. You wonder if Nelson decided to adopt the quick knockout strategy after seeing how easily Delahoya handled Leha in Madison Square Garden. 
Maybe he did, but he has to realize that he is not a, as a big of a person as De La Hoya is size-wise. And I don't truly think he has the shock or the power in his punches that De La Hoya has now. Maybe once in his younger age, but not now. No way. Hand by Leha, one to the body and one to the chin. Azuma comes back with a combination and lands the right hand over the top. I don't know if Azuma truly can hurt Leha. Oh, there oh, yeah. he is. Oh, yeah. He sure can. Yeah, he's hurt badly now. And that's it. I don't think he will ever recover from this. This fight is all over. This fight is all over here. Leha up at nine. And the round ends, so Jesse will get a minute to try to clear his head. Can I ask a question? Did you hear the 10-second slap? What's that? The 10-second slap. Was that accurate? Was that an accurate round? Well, I saw him lift the knee between 9 and 10, and I was pretty sure he got it up. No, I'm talking about. That was a shot. to me. How are you? Okay. How are you? Who do I am? Who's that? Who's that? That was a shot. You got to You got to keep fighting. Let's take a look at that punch. A big right hand as Lehock has his hand down low. As big and perfect a right hand as Nelson could land. Lehock was, Le was trying to throw a right up cup, and that's the worst time in the world to get hit with any type of a punch. You still think Leha can't recover from that, Roy? Well, I think he can now since he had a round. It's a possibility. I'm not sure if he will. But in that round, he was truly through. So you're saying you didn't hear the slap to indicate that only 10 seconds remained in the round. That's what I was saying. Well, that was during the count. Exactly. Because they were counting. Yeah, so that's why you didn't hear it. Great body shot. Azuma can't get careless here because Leha is still strong. Think Azuma's going to be thinking right hand again? I'm sure he is. He wants to see Leha back on the camera. Overhand right. This one falls a little short. and almost certainly with a 10-8 round in round number one, so an early scoring deficit for Leha. Leha must be in, a, in wonderful condition to have survived quite as well as he has. You would not know he had been knocked down at this point. Zuma's really going out in here. He said show up early, and he meant every word of it. James got in a right hand counter, but this is mostly all Azuma Nelson midway through round two. Well, James is fighting a smart fight here. He is beating Azuma's body. This will weaken Azuma if this fight goes within eight or ten rounds. So Leha should be looking to pick his spots to the body. Yes, he should, because this takes the power out of a power puncher. Hard left hand lands for Leha as Azuma backs away. I don't recall seeing Nelson come out this fast before. It's not his normal style. But this is an after dark fight, and this is our natural style. <laughs> and as you said uh, earlier, Roy, that after having gone 24 rounds with each other, they might as well come out and start fast. That's the great thing about fighting a guy two or three times. Good body shot by Azuma. Azuma really committing to every right hand. Fighting entirely flat-footed, thinking power all the way. That's the way he always did it. 
with the jab and following up with big right hands. I think Nelson has developed a new respect for Leha, and this is why he's landing his jab, and this is why Leha is not landing the jab. And I think if Leha is going to get back in the fight, Roy will do it with the left hook. And the body punch. confidence in his ability to flip a punch. He sits there and is just so confident the way he slips Leha's big punches. Leha just doesn't look as quick as he did in the first couple of fights. Well, because those losses take that type of stuff out of you. That was the effect that I was speaking of earlier when I said after a fighter loses a couple of fights, he's not the same. But he is punching hard. And maybe more telling than the loss to De La Hoya was the 12-round war that he lost to Gabriel Ellis. He took a lot of heavy shots from Gabriel. Yeah, and Gabriel did knock him down. It looks like Nelson. Nelson now seems to have gone back to wanting to be a counterpuncher. And I think Leha now is dictating again. Uh, because uh, Nelson is allowing him to. Which is just what I was about to say. Leha landing two left hooks in recent sequences. And that's a big mistake by uh, Nelson to let Leha push the issue. Because if Leha gets the, the chance to push the issue, he will outpoint Nelson. Azuma cracking Leha with a hard overhand right. Leha looking for more opportunities to go to the body with the left hook. Azuma takes the initiative again and lands another right hand. And a big left. That's the best fight for Azuma to push the issue. If he waits, Leha will not come out. Spirit of the Games, it's coming up Tuesday night. Let's have another look at the promotion. Return to a time of true Olympic gold. I didn't even think about making them money in sport. I can tell you, you did it for the love of sports. Strip away the years. Rediscover the summer games. Unadorned, pure, and simple. In never-before-seen home movies. With Olympic athletes telling their own stories in their own words. This is what you've trained 10,000 hours for. Return to the spirit of the games. Premieres Tuesday night at 10.15 on HBO. Round 
four, and Azuma Nelson had decreed that it wouldn't last more than three. So Leha has weathered the early storm. Now can he find a way to turn the fight to his tactical advantage? I think he can. In this fight, I must say, the old man is starting to show a few signs of getting old because he wanted to come out and push the issue, but he just can't hold up that pace like he wants to. But he did score an early knockdown against Leha and seemed to establish his way of fighting in the first few rounds, so you would expect Nelson to have an early lead in points as he pounds away at Leha against the ropes again. Hopefully. for Leha. Sneaking in left hooks to the body. Starting to connect with the jab. Things getting a little bit better as times go on for James Leha. Straight jab to the body. You don't often see that, Roy. No, you don't see that. Jesse James Leha is making a big mistake by sitting here and letting Azuma just dictate the fight. Azuma is the older of the two. He should make the old man work. made your reputation over the years by getting off and winning exchanges, winning fights in which you were willing to trade shots like James Leah. Sooner or later, you reach the end of the diving board, and you don't necessarily have to be 35 years of age for it to happen. Well, you got a point there. He's had a lot of tough rounds against tough fighters, including 24 rounds with Azuma. That was a great right hand by Leha, though. And Azuma answers with an overhand right as of, of his own. Azuma's throwing a good left uppercut because Leha is stepping his hook. So the more Leha steps into the left hook, the more Azuma will come back with the left hand uppercut? Yeah, he fools him like he's going to throw the left uppercut to make him duck straight down. I mean, like he's going to throw the left hook to make him duck straight down, and he throws the left uppercut instead. So Leha runs right into it. There's a good left hook by Leha, and he lands a right hand behind it. Best flurry of the bout so far for James Leha. And this is what he should be doing. I think the whole fighter will wear down. What you gotta do? Water. Open up. Open up. What I just want to make sure I don't get give us no trouble. Harold Letterman, how do you have it so far? Well, Jim, 39 to 36, three rounds to one, Azuma Nelson. I really didn't think Jesse James Leha was going to get up at the end of the first round, because to me, he looked like he was gone. But in any case, I thought that the second and third round, he was really fighting a lot on instinct. And the fourth round, he seemed to come alive. He just started to back up Nelson. He started to get busy. He started to punch. And he won the fourth round. Three to one, Azuma Nelson. I have it two rounds to one and one even to Leha. The points are even. It's an even fight because of the knockdown in the first round, the two-point round for Nelson. I thought that Leha won the last two rounds. Round five of a scheduled 12 rounds. Azuma Nelson's super featherweight title at stake in his third battle with Jesse James Leha. with the left hook, but he lands the straight right again. And the body punches are setting all this up. And that's what I said he should have been doing the whole time. This way you make the older fighter work. And you take a lot out of him by hitting him to his body. 
Oh, good body Asuma shot. Asuma goes by to the low blow, and Leha comes back with a low blow of his own. Actually, I don't think Asuma was a low blow. some free shots as Azuma starts to slow down on punch put or punch out put. I think Azuma is trying to wear Leha down by letting him throw a lot of punches. This seems to be his game plan right now. But the thing is, taking punches takes just as much out of you as throwing them does. I always thought it took more out of you, Roy. <laughs> Developed right there from that left hook over the yep. eye, Leha. A huge bad cut. cut. Huge cut over the right eye, and you're exactly right, Roy. It came from that left hook. And Azuma wants to go in for the kill. And left, uh, uh, Leha was hurt by a left body shot there, too. Plenty of time to finish in round five. Nelson thinking knockout for the second time in the bout. And this is a dog fight. Well, Leha has been cut on many occasions and survived, including the last time these two fought. There's that left oh, cup that I right. told you about. Come on, step up. But this is a nasty cut, the blood flowing into Leha's eyes. You have to be very careful. Leha is still a big, dangerous puncher. Leha considering whether to start unloading the kitchen against Azuma because this cut may not give him many more chances in the bout. And I must admit that Nelson seems to be the stronger of the two right now. You cannot stay in front of him and do nothing. You gotta go punch the game. You was doing to do it. Just like a real, he was about to go. You almost had him going now. He's wearing out, James. All right. The cut man in Leha's corner is Joe Souza. If you saw Arturo Gatti versus Wilson Rodriguez on the second installment of Boxing After Dark, and if you saw it, you'll never forget it, Gatti's cut man who rescued his man's chances to win that fight was Joe Souza, this same guy. This cut is very similar over the, over a diff, over the other eye as it occurred in the second fight. There is the punch that opened his eyes. On four or five occasions, Leos has been cut and has had plastic surgery so that if you saw him, you wouldn't really know that he had had all of those cuts. But he said to us yesterday, I cut too easily. I just hope that Steele will give me a chance to stay in there if it happens. And there he got hooked with a double left hook right on the cut at the beginning of the round. Azuma Nelson, the old professor, taking James Lay out of school now as round six begins. There was also two great body shots by the veteran. The old professor thinks he has lifetime tenure. <laughs> the one thing he has to be, oh, good hook. By, oh, there he is, he's out. Leha is hurt badly. Leha not holding on, electing to punch back instead. Good body shot by the professor. These body shots are really taking a toll on Leha. Steele pulls him apart. He wants to stop the fight because he knows Leha is beginning to show wear and tear. He better punch back or, or still will stop this fight. The body shots have weakened Leha so much that his punches don't have the same power on him. But he's still got the guts to throw as blood envelops his right eye. He has the heart of a champion. He landed a great body shot there. But I just don't know if he can come back from this. Azuma slowing down for the moment having thoroughly dominated the first 60 seconds of this round. He came out of his corner and threw those two left hooks in a hurry to reopen the cut over Leha's eye. And since then, he's been landing more or less at will. Jim, I must say that I think the two losses are the main factor here. Because Leha just doesn't have the same confidence that he had before. Yeah, but I also have oh. to give Nelson credit. Yes. Richard Steele seen enough. And Azuma Nelson 
as the technical knockout victory he so badly wanted in his revenge bout against James Leha. The diamond keeps sparkling. He is an amazing character, Azuma Nelson. I don't recall a top fighter in the lower weight divisions sustaining this kind of quality these many years. Ever. Ever. And yeah. Richard Steele's been ripped in the past for what people thought were quick stoppages, but I'm not sure you can criticize this one, Roy. No, I think this was excellent because the guy was showing wear and tear. Azuma clearly wore this guy down with body punches. He made Leha punch, he made Leha punch, he took all of it, he blocked it, and then he wore Leha's body down. And in this last round, prior to the stoppage, Leha simply not ready or willing to fight back enough to prevent Richard Steele from calling a halt. And we'll take another look at the sequence prior to the stoppage. Azuma landing lefts and rights and then setting up the target and coming in with a combination and Richard Steele says enough. The fans definitely and obviously want to see death, but it's not going to happen here. Richard Steele because of a very, very severe laceration to the right eye of Jesse James Leha had to call a halt for the bout. We'll have the official time for you in just a moment. This great warrior has just been worn down by a true old veteran. No complaint from Leha when the fight was stopped. You heard the crowd booing, but Jesse James himself walked to his corner and accepted Steele's stoppage with total equanimity. You can see that Nelson landed almost exactly twice as many punches as Leia in the bout, was landing at a 51% connect percentage, and this is thorough dominance on Azuma Nelson's part. Incidentally, the three judges had it scored 48, 46, 48, 46, 49, 46, all in favor of Azuma Nelson. So the old professor was headed toward a possible decision victory if he wasn't able to get the stoppage, and he did. And now Michael Buffer with more of the particulars. Once again, the bout was called a halt to because of a very severe laceration suffered to the right eye of Jesse James Leha. He was unable to continue. Referee stops the bout at 158. 158 of round number six. The winner and still WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, the Professor Azuma. Final look at the scene in the ring. Azuma Nelson at age 37, after 17 years as a professional fighter, has the 39th victory of his illustrious career, and Larry Merchant is with him. Azuma, Azuma, congratulations to you. You did what you said you would do. Did you think, having watched Leha lose to De La Hoya and to Ruelas, that you could overpower him. You know, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my God for making this possible. My God, let me know that, uh, I mean, with him all things are possible. I mean, uh, I love my God and my God is able. I'd like to thank my, all my church members, ARS members, I say, I love, I love you. Uh, I, I love uh, Mr. Saki, my friend, my friends. Hey, Babu, wherever you are, come home. I love you. I miss you, baby. Right. Barbara, I'd like to give thanks to Barbara for giving me this opportunity to prove myself once again. And then, I mean, now I'm ready. Okay, now let me repeat the question. Did you think having watched Leha get overpowered by Ruelas and by De La Hoya, that that was how you had to fight him? No, 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 not that. You know, I told you before the fight that, I mean, Nobody can beat me twice. You know, this is the history that I'm, I'm making. And nobody can beat me twice. But no. you were more aggressive than we have seen you earlier in a fight. Why was that? I mean, that's what I told you. I can, look, I wanted to uh, take him out in the first round, you see. But 
I decided not to take him out in the first round. You understand? So um, I wanted to punish him for a while and prove people people think I'm old and I can't go more I can't go the distance. You know, and I want to and I, I decided I changed my mind that I wanted to knock him out in the eleventh round or twelfth round so that people will know that the stamina that I have is unquestionable. Well let's take a look at the first round knockdown. If we can get it up here on the monitor and you tell us what you saw in the first round. Look at this right here. And look at this round. Nobody can take it like that. But, you know, he's a very strong guy. Uh, I, I, I said before that if he if it, if it go two rounds, he will go to coma. But I decided you know, I have to punish him. I have to let him know that I mean, I'm the best in the world. All right. As the best in the world, what's next? Are you going to go back? to your homeland for another year and come back and beat somebody else? And who would that somebody else should be? I, I don't know. I wish I can fight next, uh, tomorrow or next week. But all depend on my, uh, my new promoters now, for Baron and the company. I mean, I'm waiting for them. Whatever they say, they tell me to go on tomorrow. Hey, man, I'll take anybody. I don't care who I fight. Thank you very much, Azuma Nelson. And here, let's talk to Jesse James Leha. Jesse, yeah. you were in against a different fighter tonight, even though he looked familiar to you, or were you just not the same fighter you had been when you fought him before? Uh, no, I, I, I'm the same fighter. I just think it was his night. Uh, I tried, I fought hard, and he fought hard, and it was just his night. The other two times were my night. You know, you you said beforehand that you thought he would come out hard. Were you surprised? Why couldn't you hold him off? Well, he, no, it's not that I couldn't hold him off. He, I just got caught with a good punch, and uh, it could happen to anybody in boxing. And he's a good fighter, and I'm a good fighter. I just happened to get caught tonight. It was his night, not my night, and he won. You came back after the knockdown and did pretty well for two or three rounds. Had you felt no effects from that punch? Oh, uh, really, I, I didn't feel too much from that punch. To tell you the truth, when you get down, you really don't know if you were down or not. Uh, I guess I got up right away. I wasn't too I wasn't hurt. Um, it just... Um, you know, one of them things, I have to go back and look at the tape and see where I went wrong. He opened your hot eye pretty badly there. It's a nasty gash that looks just like the one you had over your left eye in the last fight. Do you think that referee Steele properly ended it because of that and because of the punishment you were taking? Well, I don't know. I have to go back and look at the tape. I cut real easily, and that's always been my problem in boxing. I cut too easy, and that's been my downfall. Um, but to no excuse he just today was his night and he was a better fighter tonight that's plain and, and simple and for your fans in san antonio and elsewhere you have no quarrel with the stoppage of the fight um i'm not too sure i have to go back and look at the tape and and look and observe it and see what happened but hey i mean this is boxing you know it's a it's a it's a weird sport it's a fun sport but it has its ups and downs and i have to go back home and look at the tape and and maybe he'll give me a rematch like I gave him rematch. Thank you very much, Jesse James. And now back to Jim and Roy. All right, thanks very much, Larry. Tremendous performance by the 37-year-old Zuma Nelson. You look around at 130 pounds and look for opponents down the road who could make for exciting fights with Nelson. Gennaro Hernandez, loser last year to De La Hoya, but still unbeaten uh, at, that, at this weight against all the other fighters he's faced. How would he do against Azuma? Not very well. Azuma surprised me tonight. He's a very strong fighter. He still has what it takes to be a champion. Gennaro Hernandez wants no part of Azuma. All right. What about the young 130-pound star, Arturo Gatti? Would he be ready for somebody like the old professor? There you have an after dark fight. <laughs> That's the type of fights that we make, that we see here, that make us want to come back each month and do it again. Right. That would be a war of all wars. Maybe we'll see it. Arturo Gatti against 37-year-old Azuma Nelson. Maybe, maybe Azuma would be 38 or 39 by the time that one could take place. Let's look ahead to next Friday night and what is being called almost two years after your battle with James Tony, which was the first fight of the decade for the 90s. The new fight of the decade for the 90s, Oscar De La Hoya against Julio Cesar Chavez to take place here in Vegas next Friday. What do you think? I think that would be a terrific fight. I think Oscar De La Hoya, who I have to lean to because he's an American, he's a fellow Olympian, and I like the guy. You know, I think he's going to be one of the potential greatest fighters to ever come through. I think if he fights, takes, takes his time, boxes De La Hoya, I mean, boxes Chavez, fights a very smart and intelligent fight. Don't go for the knockout until this time. He'll beat the old veteran. So the way for De La Hoya to knock out Chavez is to box him. And have patience. 
All right. Thanks very much, Roy. Get back in training. We'll Thank see you in two you. weeks against Derek Lucas. Weeks. What up, Shout? Larry Merchant makes his way back down from uh, the ring. We heard what uh, Roy Jones had to say about Delahoy and Chavez. You alluded to it earlier. What are your thoughts about that fight? Well, one thought is that I think that Chavez, who had the incentive now to get into the kind of supreme condition that I don't think he's been in for a long time, will fight better than a lot of people think he can still fight. And if you need an object lesson, we just saw it here tonight because Azuma Nelson is more than three years older than Julio Cesar Chavez. Having said that, I think there's something else, and this is what we did allude to before. There will be, in this fight, three foreign judges, and the WBC will have appointed them. The WBC, who I think it can be said, and I will say it, is among all of the corrupt boxing organizations, the champ. The officials will come from Thailand, from Belgium, and from Great Britain. The Las Vegas Commission had the choice of having a, an official from Mexico, an official from America, and one foreign official. They chose three foreign officials because they know, as we all know, that no Mexican official can score a fight against Julio Cesar Chavez. Having said all that, and having seen what we saw tonight, hopefully we won't need the officials to make the verdict for us. The fighters will. All right, we'll look forward to that one next Friday night, I'm sure. This TVK 